Fraud Prevention 101, the definitive guide to keeping you safe and sound. Presented by Golden Providers. Golden Providers are top industry professionals in real estate, assisted living, senior care, and so much more. Visit us online at goldenproviders.com. All right. Well, thank you very much. And thank you to the Golden Providers. What a wonderful idea and service to our community. Um, prevention, education is really the, the, the biggest weapon that we have in trying to combat fraud and, and, and fighting those that would uh, take advantage of some, most of the time our most vulnerable citizens, either seniors or someone that may be suffering from uh, some mental uh, issues and, uh, and dementia and so forth. So uh, what a wonderful idea to get together and share this information. And so I go out uh, and people from my office, we go out to as many of these kind of uh, uh, organizations or as many of these events as we can. And, and so it's really exciting to see not only that you all are here, but that they're taping this and can and make that available to other people. Um, because that is, that's the key, it's really education prevention. Um, it's, it's kind of a small group, but let me ask you, um, how many people in here, either themselves, a family member, a friend, that you know that has been scammed or ripped off or had some kind of identity theft or fraud? How many of us in this room? Yeah, look at this. I mean, wow, what are, you know, almost 90, probably 90% 90 of us in this room. Um, you know, that's amazing. Um, it's amazing and frightening and, and, and disheartening probably all at the same time. But that's what we were seeing across the United States, not only just in Brevard County or in Florida, uh, but across the United States. Now, unfortunately, Florida is usually the number one uh, or number two in, in, in fraud and scams that, that hit uh, our state. And that's not something we're proud of. Um, but we do have a large concentration of seniors in, in the state of Florida. We have nice warm weather today. It's a little chilly, but it's going to be nice and sunny and beautiful. Um, well, I'd say chilly, right? Yeah, I know. It's a few degrees cooler. So, um, but at least, you know, there's, there's a lot of people come here to retire and they bring with them uh, money and savings. And, 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 and so they're, they're targets. So we have a lot of targets here in the state of Florida. Um, and and it's, it's, it's disheartening because when you look at crime stats across the United States, in Florida and across the United States, in Florida we're at a 49-year crime rate low. Violent crime is down, and that's the same across the United States. Most crime is down, violent crime is down, um, historic lows in, in most states. Except for one area, guess what? Scams and frauds. White collar crimes uh, geared towards these uh, internet scams and, and identity thefts and so forth, those are way up. And why is that? Well, bad guys and bad girls, um, you know, they're, they're not stupid. Some of them are, we can usually catch the stupid ones, um, but they're not all stupid and they, and they know, um, they do a risk benefit calculation. And so they have figured out you know, we can rob a bank and get $10,000 or $20,000, and there's a lot of risk in that. You're going to have to carry firearms, and there's alarm buttons, and police are going to show up. And you rob a bank here in Brevard County, um, our sheriff, uh, Wayne Ivey, or police chief, if it's in the city, they're going to investigate and come after you. It doesn't matter if you leave here and, and go to somewhere else. They're going to track you down and find you. But the bad guys have learned, you know what, we can, instead of doing that, why don't we get one dollar from 20,000 people spread across the whole United States? What police agency is going to come after me? Probably none. It's almost impossible. So they've learned through the use of computers um, and phone calls and robocalls and all these different technologies that we have and makes our lives easier in, in a lot of ways, but it also makes it easier for crooks. And so they have learned they can make so much more money with these scams um, with very little risk um, of getting caught. Um, you know, when, you, when people send money, um, you know, by uh, wiring money or mailing off checks or gift cards and all those things, most of the time you don't know who you sent it to. You might have a name, which we know that name is not going to be uh, an, a real name. Um, the address a lot of times are P.O. Box or drop boxes that uh, are usually uh, hired or, or uh, put together by uh, under false uh, identities and so forth. So um, once the money leaves here, once you send money to um, somewhere outside uh, our area, it's pretty much gone. And I have to give that sad news to so many victims to say, you know, once that money is gone, 
it's pretty much gone. We're not going to get it back. Um, and that's not because local law enforcement doesn't care. They just don't have that kind of resources. They can't, when you wire money to Mexico or you wire money to Canada or you send uh, money somewhere else, they don't have those resources to be able to go and conduct those investigations in other countries or in other states. Um, it's just impossible. So that's why this is so important to, to get out and do these um, these kind of seminars and, and events. And, and anyone out here out there that sees this video, you have an or organization, I don't care if it's 10 people or 100 people, you know, let us know, get in touch with us, and we'll be glad to, to come out and uh, speak to your group as well, because I, I really do believe this is the way we have to do it. So let's talk a little, one of the things I like to do is try to talk about some of the current scams that we're seeing. And unfortunately, when I say current scams, they seem to be the same ones over and over and over again, but we see them rotating in and out, and, and we don't have a whole lot of time, so I'll, I'll just do a couple real brief ones, and then I'm going to uh, have some handouts that will be available for you that can, we can talk about later. But one of the biggest ones that we continue to see um, is the family member in trouble. And that hits a lot of our seniors, a lot of our, uh, a lot of our people. And, and it, it's, to me, it's probably the worst one out there because a lot of scams are based on people's greed. Ha, you know, I've got $40 million dollars in a bank account, I just need somebody's bank account to put it in. You know, those kind of, you know, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get $40 million. So those are kind of based on greed, right? And yeah, you get ripped off, you should have known, right? The old adage, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. The family member in trouble though is the one that bothers me so much. And, and we've had very, a lot of local people that have fallen for that. Um, even within my office, we had a, 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 a lady that worked for us. Her husband was home, um, suffered from some dementia. And he got a phone call and said, hey, your, uh, your uh, grandson has been in a horrible accident uh, in Mexico. He's going to die if he doesn't get an operation and he doesn't, they won't take his insurance. And, you know, uh, you need to wire, I think it was $1,500, $2,000 immediately or he's going to die. So he goes down, he wires the money, you know. And, um, and I got to tell you, some of the organizations, probably some in Golden Provider, some of the uh, Walmart and Western Union and banks are getting really good at trying to keep people from wiring money to other countries. So a lot of those companies think, you know, kudos to them. We've had so many cases where they've stopped the person and say, why are you wiring this money? Where, why are you sending money to, to Mexico? Or, you know, and, and that's huge. And again, it goes towards that prevention and education. So anyway, he wired the money. Within a minute or a couple minutes of that, uh, one of the sons called and said, hey, what are you doing? You know, and he said, I, I just wired money because so-and-so has been in a horrible accident. No, no, dad, he hadn't been in a horrible accident. He's in New York or something like that. And they were able to go back and the money had not been picked up yet and they were able to cancel that, um, which is very unusual. Usually by the time you wired that money, they, it's gone. But they were able to cancel it, get the money back. And 30 minutes later, he gets a phone call and says, hey, why didn't you wire the money? Your grandson's going to die. And he said, no, no, it's a scam. I know it's a scam. Now I've been told, blah, blah, blah. They hang up. 15 minutes later, they get another phone call. Hi, this is the U.S. Embassy in Mexico. Uh, we just want to let you know this is not a scam and blah, blah, blah. You know, that is the links that they will go to to kind of carry that off. And you're thinking, how, you know, how does people fall for that? Well, they may make 100 phone calls. They may make 1,000 phone calls. They just need one person that maybe, you know, two o'clock in the morning, how many of us are really thinking clearly at two o'clock in the morning? You know, you might be just, just a little addled or whatever it might be, or if you are suffering from dementia or some other illnesses and stuff. And so, and, and you know, you're panicking because, oh my gosh, I gotta, you know, somebody's hurt and, and, and you wire that money. So they're very good at what they do. And then, you know, people say, well, how do they know the person's name? Well, they're good at this. You know, they're like carnival barkers. They know how to pull that information or psychics or something, you know. You know, say, hey, uh, grandma, you know, if a, if a woman answers the phone, hey, grandma, you know, uh, you know this your grandson, I'm, I'm in trouble. Well, well, who's this? Grandma, you don't, you don't even know your own grandson? Is this Billy? Yes, grandma, it's Billy. You know, that's all they need. They know how to pull just a nugget of information out to try to, to, try to do that scam. And I said, they may do this thousand times over over a night so they're very good at what they do how else do they do you think they get information about you and your family and where you're traveling and all that stuff yeah specific facebook 
the devil's book, as I like to call it. So. <laughs> and now, unfortunately, we're on Facebook, uh, State Attorney Phil Archer. You can go on our, our site. Um, I have a, a, a public information, information officer, and he does all my Facebook stuff, and we try to keep stuff pub up there about scams and so forth. So unfortunately, I have to tell you, you can go there and get a good information. But Facebook is just a horrible. I mean, it really is as far as the information that people put out there. And so, you know, if I could tell you, you know, one, one tip, it would be, you know, be very careful what you put on Facebook. You know, that has become a gold mine of information for people to, to, uh, to use for scams and frauds. And I saw we have, we have some other great speakers, it looks like, on internets and bank frauds and stuff, so I don't want to step on their toes, but the information they're pull, pulling off Facebook. And, and, you know, we put out a newsletter a couple weeks ago, and I'll talk about that in a minute, in which now people are going on and stealing your identity, basically, from Facebook, taking your photo that you put up there on Facebook, and then sending that, making a false, a fake profile, and sending that to all your friends, because they get all your friends list on your Facebook page, and they send that, and so their friends open up, say, oh, it's, you know, John Doe is sending me a, a Facebook posting, and he wants me to donate to uh, his favorite charity, which is, you know, ABC, which happens, you know, to be a part of a scam. Well, it must be legitimate because there's my friend and his photos right there. Can't be a scam, right? Of course it can be. And that's, that's so Facebook is becoming really, really huge, and that's a problem. You know, there was just, I just read an article yesterday that, unfortunately, again, last year, um, uh, seniors were, again, the number one target uh, number as far as numbers. Uh, on scams and frauds and, uh, and leading the way and, and how much money per, per incident that they lose. And it was interesting because it's something, they said something that I've talked about before. Um, two reasons why seniors tend to get scammed more so than anybody else. Anybody know what that one, per, one thing is, or two things, but the first thing is that the first thing that allows people to get into your, your home, what is it? The phone, answering the phone, right? Why? Because seniors have been taught early on that you have to answer the phone, right? I mean, it's rude not to answer the phone. I've, done, I've fought this battle with my, with my mom now, previously with my father before he passed away. If the phone rang, they had to answer it. And that's the first thing that, that they're counting on is to get you on that phone because then they then they have you. And then the second thing the article said was that not only are, are, are past generations taught that it's rude not to answer a phone, it's rude to hang up on people. <laughs> it's not. It's really not. You can hang up on people. You should hang up on people. I have, uh, and, and, uh, you know, that, that, if you would just do those two things, stay off, of, uh, stay, stay off Facebook and don't answer the phone. And when I say don't answer the phone, obviously you have to have some way of finding, you know, what's going on, who's calling you and so forth. Answer machines, screen your calls, you know, um, and, and that, that's a huge thing. If you can screen your calls so that you can wait, and, and I, like I said, I fought this battle with my mom. My mom's funny. She's 93, and she likes answering it because she likes to fight with them. So, and, but I don't encourage people to do that. But, you know, I, I told her, to, don't do that. Just screen your call, but she can't do it. Uh, but, you know, she'll say, how, you know, how would you feel if somebody was ripping off your mother? And she gives them the whole shame, shame uh, speech. Don't do that. I told, told her, don't, en don't engage with these people. And, and a lot of times what happens is they found the more, you, if you answer the phone, you're actually acknowledging that it's, this is a good phone number, there's a live person on the other end, and now you, know, you, you fall into a higher category. Um, so the best thing is just not answer it, let it go to an answer machine, and then listen to the me message. And it, it takes that pressure off. It really does take some of that pressure off that you have to you know, immediately go out and do something. It gives you a little, because somebody's jabbering in your ear telling you, you gotta do it, you gotta do it, you gotta do it. Um, and, and I'll just give an example, um, uh, pharmacy fraud, there's a, that one tends to come around here and there, and that's where you get a phone call and says, hey, this is uh, Walgreens or uh, CVS pharmacy. Uh, your, your prescription's ready, but we have a problem with your account. We need to get some more information, uh, you know, your Medicare uh, numbers and your Social Security and your bank account and all that stuff. And, uh, and, and so you're thinking, okay, well, I, I do 
I do have my prescriptions at CVS. I was waiting on a prescription. A lot of us get monthly you know, uh, prescriptions. And so you would give them that information. Um, that has happened quite a bit here, even in Brevard County. And you think, well, how do they know I have CVS prescriptions? They have no idea. They have no idea. But I, and I don't tell me, but I bet if I did a survey in here, I'd find that you either CVS, Walgreens, Publix, or Walmart. I said, one of those four, I bet I could get just about everybody in here, right? And everybody watching on this video. So they know that. And so they'll make a thousand phone calls and, and say, this is CVS, and a thousand for Walgreens, a thousand for Publix, and a thousand for Walmart, and just hope that when you answer, you know, they get one or two people that answer the phone and, and they have a prescription that's ready to go, and so they give that information. So that's the extent, the deviousness that they go through to try to, to do some of those scams. Um, the, one other scam, uh, just real quickly, is on, on uh, counterfeit checks. Um, that, that has not gone away, it's gotten worse and worse. It, and this works in a couple different ways. If you're trying to sell something, if you're trying to sell something, on, excuse me, on eBay or Facebook, what's the one, Facebook uh, Marketplace, yeah, that's a big one now. You will get contacted and they, let's say you're putting something on for uh, $2,000. And they will contact you and say, hey, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to send you a check. Uh, they don't come see you because you're never going to meet them or talk, talk to them. They send you a check for $2,500. And you go, oh, my gosh, this is, what's going on? I got $2,500. They will call you up and say, hey, uh, did you get my check? Yeah, but it's for $2,500. They say, well, gosh, it was a mistake. My bookkeeper messed up. My husband, wife, whatever, they blame it on. Tell you what, if you'll go down and cash your check, uh, if you'll keep the 2,000 and just wire me back the 500, we'd really appreciate it. You know what? Um, uh, I'm, uh, you know, uh, keep an extra 50 bucks. If you'll just wire back the 450, and, I, and usually the numbers are bigger, but just for sake of purpose. What happens is when you go to the bank, your bank's going to cash that check for you. I know there's somebody here from banks, so I don't want to insult bank people, but you know, bank's going to cash it. If you're a good customer, they're going to cash your check. They're not going to question you. What happens is it takes a while for that check to work its way through the system. Sometimes it can take three, four days, it could take a week, and take 10 days before it comes back to your bank that it's a counterfeit check. And those checks are so real now, you cannot tell the difference. Um, in fact, I had, a, I, I, I had this scam happen to me, and this was the cashier's check that was sent to me. And it's got watermarks on it. It's you know, from a bank, a credit union in California. I checked the credit union exists. Everything is perfect on this cashier's check but it's a complete scam, it's a complete fraud. And the bank's not, not gonna know that initially, they may or may not know, they may catch it, but they probably won't. And, um, but you're and so the bank's gonna come to you and say, you owe us money now. And they're perfectly legal right for them to demand that money because they're just cashing that check for you as a service. So you have to be so careful now, anytime you get checks, uh, cashier's checks. That's why closings now, real estate closings, they don't take cashier's checks anymore. They have done with cashier's checks. You know, it used to be a cashier's check for like gold, you know, they, they were official. Nobody believes them anymore. You can't, you can't trust a cashier check, so they don't use them. So anyway, that's a quick frauds. I know I'm coming up on 25 minutes here, so I'm going to try to, to get through this real quick. I have a couple of handouts out here that I would uh, ask you to uh, take, especially if you have other groups that you can take them back to. One is an identity fraud action steps. It's a four page um, uh, front and back, two pages, um, on what to do if you think you have become a victim of identity theft. This is a really good step-by-step -step process to go through. I'd love to say that I created it, but I stole it from Attorney General Pam, Pam Bondi back when she was Attorney General. And uh, you know, it's, it's just a great, it really is a good thing. So I, you know, I leave that up there. Also, there's a little handout on charity and donations, if you're gonna give to charities and donations, um, and also some identity theft steps. You know, we are one of the most giving people on the planet Earth, and every time there's a natural disaster, you know, we give money, scammers know that. Within, within hours of any natural disaster, whether it's a hurricane, tornado, uh, tsunami, there are scammers already creating fake web pages or websites where they try to get your money. This tells you how to kind of protect yourself from that as much as you can, so please utilize that as well. And then also, I'm going to leave a, uh, a sign-up sheet here if any of you want to sign up for our newsletter. We do a newsletter um, every month. In fact, I got a couple of copies of our recent one, our most recent one. 
not that I had more, but we do a monthly brief. It's a one page monthly brief. Um, and again, I have a great uh, writer on staff that puts this together, Todd Brown, and we keep it one page. Uh, we keep it very simple. We try to talk about some of the current scams and frauds that are going on out there. And um, please sign up if you want to get this every month and you have an organization that you can shoot it out to some other people. Um, I promise you if, you, if you give us your email address, we won't try to sell you anything. We won't try to scam you. Um, but, um, but people have used, well, you know, scammers have used my likeness and our web page to try to do that. We had some people, somebody call some Puerto Rico or Virgin Islands or somewhere saying, hey, where's my money? Where's my grant that you're giving out? And we're like, what are you talking about? And they sent us a link that showed somebody had take my picture and our, our state attorney's web address and figured out a way to convince people that we were going to give out grants and got some money and scam. So I'll leave that up there up here as well, some examples. But um, yeah, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're interested, sign up and I'll leave that up there and then you can, we can get that back from us. Um, because it's a great way to get that information out. When we, we get a phone call about a current scam, we try to get that in the next newsletter. Or actually on our Facebook page, State Attorney Phil Archer, we put it up immediately and then it goes into our newsletter. So that was very, uh, as you can tell, I'm out of breath. Uh, I could run through about 18 other uh, scams and frauds, but um, that kind of just gives you an idea. Um, again, vigilance is the, is the best thing. If it sounds like a scam, it probably is a scam, and you just got to help your, help your loved ones, help your neighbors, um, you know, to, to kind of be a resource and kind of just keep an ear out. If you hear they're heading to the wire money or heading to the bank to take out some money, you know, ask them why. Ask them some questions. Um, and, and I said, again, thanks to the Golden Providers and the businesses that are really helping us uh, prevent some of those scams. So anyway, thank Great. you very thank much. You. Okay, you. bye. Thank you. Fraud Prevention 101, the definitive guide to keeping you safe and sound. Presented by Golden Providers. Golden Providers are top industry professionals in real estate, assisted living, senior care, and so much more. Visit us online at goldenproviders.com.